so thank you so much for uh, finding uh, finding out time to do this uh, so my question to you is the strike that took place at a hospital in gaza yesterday perhaps uh, you know the government of israel idf has to say in fact they have come up with uh, video evidence technical evidence uh, uh, supporting their claims uh, that this is uh, this was a work of uh, uh, of hamas uh, groups on that side it there is no involvement of idf or any other unit of israel uh, i want to know for you do you really think that the strike on hospital is going to be a turning point in this ongoing war between israel and hamas let's be clear there was no israeli air strike on that hospital none fake news complete fake news what happened okay. is that a rocket fired by okay. palestinian islamic jihad inside the gaza strip misfired and landed on that hospital mm -hmm. like 450 other rockets fired by palestinian terrorist groups inside the gaza strip that fell short over just the last 12 days hitting inside the gaza strip now the world is right to be outraged by what we saw yesterday the images inside the gaza strip but that outrage should be directed at the terror groups that are committing war crimes first of all by targeting israel civilians with their missiles, but also by hiding behind Palestinian civilians, using them as human shields. And we saw the horrific results just uh, yesterday, although we're still trying to understand what exactly happened, how many people were injured, because it's clear that Hamas uh, dramatically inflated and exaggerated the numbers at the beginning. But what happened yesterday okay. was a Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket misfired from inside the Gaza Strip. They shot it from a cemetery behind a hospital. The shrapnel landed on a hospital. That is why people are dead and Hamas and Hamas alone is solely responsible for all those terrible tragic civilian casualties inside the Gaza Strip. Okay so President Biden is in Tel Aviv he's holding talks with Prime Minister Netanyahu perhaps both leaders came in front of media where President Biden uh, supported Israel and perhaps he also said that it was a uh, work of the other group uh, uh, other group so perhaps he's also convinced with what Israel is saying how do you look at the support of President Biden especially in these times where there is immense pressure on America uh, uh, for a ceasefire there is immense pressure on America uh, for security President Biden's support is extremely important for the state of Israel as we respond to the October 7th massacre, the worst terror attack in world history after 9-11. We're very grateful for the support and the moral clarity and leadership of our great friend, the United States, the leader of the free world. President Biden has been clear from the very first moment that Israel has a right and a duty to respond and defend itself against that October 7th massacre, that it's legitimate for Israel to dismantle Hamas, that Hamas is like ISIS. It's worse than ISIS. He ordered from the very first moment the American army to make sure that the Israeli army has all the supplies that it needs in order to complete its mission of demolishing Hamas. And just today, we saw the president of the United States, the free world, saying that based on all the evidence that he has seen, the evidence that is freely available on the internet for anyone who wants to see it, that problem, that explosion at the hospital yesterday was not caused by Israel. It was caused by Palestinian terrorists. And I would advise your viewers, anyone who's watching and wants to go into my uh, Twitter, you can look my name on Twitter. I have a whole thread explaining, putting out all the evidence step by step, showing that beyond a shadow of a doubt, what happened yesterday was the result of a Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket. That evidence is compelling. And that evidence has convinced the president of the United States. Okay. Okay, uh, sir, my next question is, uh, to you is regarding securing humanitarian corridor. Now, as, as I was pointing out, that there is immense pressure on America, perhaps from the Arab world, to secure humanitarian corridor. Can we expect some sort of an announcement, maybe today or tomorrow, as President Biden is, uh, is having talks with uh, uh, PM Netanyahu? And, and can we expect supplies to reach civilians in Gaza? What is the position of your government right now? Israel is happy to see humanitarian aid reach the civilians of Gaza. We don't want a humanitarian crisis, God forbid, in Gaza. But that humanitarian aid must reach its addressees. It must reach the people of Gaza in the safe zone in the south for those people who have heeded Israel's warning to move away from the combat zones in the north temporarily for their own safety from the areas that are going to see intense fighting. And Israel expects safeguards and the international community, international donors must demand safeguards to make sure that this humanitarian aid 
reaches civilians and doesn't reach Hamas's war machine. You know, it was only uh, just uh, yesterday or two days ago that the United Nations itself admitted that Hamas gunmen had gone into their own warehouses and stolen fuel and medicine. That was enough fuel, 24,000 liters, that it could fuel uh, Gaza's desalination plants for six days. So we're already seeing evidence of Hamas requisitioning, commandeering, taking control of international aid that is supposed to reach civilians. And the whole world, people who want to help the people of Gaza, because we don't want them to suffer, must insist on clear safeguards. That aid much must reach its addressees. It must not be allowed to reach the ISIS-style Hamas terror organization as it continues its war against Israel. Okay, there's also talk of uh, uh, not I, I wouldn't say a talk so but you know uh, the arab world wants a ceasefire uh, on israel uh, perhaps are we looking at a possibility of of, uh, of moving towards that direction or there is going to be intense ground operation by israeli forces israel is focused on one thing and one thing alone victory on the morning of the 7th of october hamas forced us into a war with a horrific crime against humanity. The October 7th massacre, which has killed 1,400 Israelis, maimed and injured 4,000 people, taken 200 people from babies to elderly people hostage inside the Gaza Strip. And we have decided that we can no longer coexist with an ISIS-style terror organization living right on our doorstep that can perpetrate such atrocities. That is why our aim and the aim we are going to pursue is to destroy Hamas, to totally dismantle its military and its governing structure, because that is what is needed needed for us to exercise our legitimate right and duty to self-defense. As the Prime Minister has made clear here in Israel, we are only just beginning. The days ahead are going to be difficult, they're going to be unpleasant, they're going to be very painful for an Israeli society that is already in immense pain. But we have no choice. This is a war that Hamas has forced us into. It's a war we didn't want, we didn't start, we didn't expect, but it's a war that we're going to win. Okay, oh, my last question, sir. This one is regarding uh, some clear which have been made by uh, people supporting Hamas. Uh, Hamas. Now, they have to say that there was warning which was given by Israel uh, to people in Gaza to evacuate that hospital area. And since they have not listened to the warning by Israel, there was, uh, uh, there was a missile strike. Can you confirm that any such warning was issued or is it a fake news? Let's be clear. What happened last night was a Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket that misfired from okay. inside the Gaza Strip and tragically hit that hospital. Okay. It was not an Israeli airstrike. We can put that story to rest and move on. The evidence is abundant. However, Israel has been urging the residents of the northern Gaza Strip more generally to evacuate since Friday for their own safety. By the way, just as Israel has evacuated its own civilians from the area around the Gaza border and from two kilometers from the Lebanese border, because we don't want our civilians to be hurt either. So just as we are asking our own people to get away from areas that are going to see intense fighting, we're asking Palestinians as well to get away from the areas that are going to see intense fighting because Hamas has embedded itself with Within civilian infrastructure, we don't want them to get hurt. We want them to move south to areas where we can establish those humanitarian frameworks to make sure they have the supplies that they need. Okay. Thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.